Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. You know, as I travel around and talk to data center professionals, one of the things I still see in the data center are spreadsheets or Excel spreadsheets. And as long as I can remember, we've been trying to get rid of the Excel spreadsheet and move on to some better management tools. And I think there's a lot of challenges with that, and maybe there's some new solutions that we should be looking at. Joining me to help with that conversation, I've invited James Honey. He's with SolarWinds. James, thanks for joining us. Thank you, George. I'm very happy to be here. So, James, what do you do for SolarWinds? So, I'm a product marketing manager for our storage resource monitor tool. Okay. And uh, just give us a little bit of background on SolarWinds for the folks that don't know about it. So, SolarWinds is an IT monitoring software company ranging from everything from network uh, monitoring tools to application virtualization and even down to storage monitoring tools. Okay. Um, so, your guys' whole company is really to ban Excel spreadsheets sheets to an example. Absolutely. Yeah. If we can, we will. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about that. Well, how do we ban Excel spreadsheets? So where we really start in a storage environment specifically is, like you said before, I have multiple storage devices, and, and underneath them, I have different volumes or LUNs, and I'm trying to keep track of what's going on with all those. Right. So these could be from different vendors, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and, and this is usually vendor A, vendor B, and sometimes it's still vendor A, but a different model from vendor right, A. Or they bought somebody and the a, logo's the same or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing that, I can see easily into vendor A. I can see into vendor B, and we'll do A prime on this one, and mm -hmm. I can see easily into A prime. Right. But when I start looking across and when I have my leadership team or, or somebody in my organization goes, well, how much capacity do we have? Where is our capacity mm -hmm. across the data center? And specifically, if I'm looking to do something different in my environment and maybe generate a hybrid IT or a hybrid cloud solution, sure. I, I need to understand where am I at? What right. am I doing here? So, so this is where the spreadsheets come out. Right. So, and, and each one of these tools typically have their own little management thing, but they only absolutely. manage each of these little bubbles. So you end up, yes. again, you go back to the Excel spreadsheets or you become a manager of eight different tools, which doesn't do the, any good Exactly. Either. Or I have somebody on my team that says, hey, your job once a <laughs> week is to look at every array yeah. and mark it down on the spreadsheet. Yeah, so that, that, that guy, that's the guy that missed the meeting. He's the guy that gets the that assignment. That right. <laughs> right, Usually yeah. it's the guy that does your backup tape pull yeah. on the same thing yeah, all the go. time too. So with, with, our, with looking at that, why do I need to do spreadsheets? Mm -hmm. And obviously, I want to understand where I'm at in my environment. I want to understand where am I growing in my environment. I want to understand where I can use resources that are that are not being used and what's being wasted. So that's why I do the spreadsheets. But as we know with spreadsheets, I have to manually do it. Right. If that guy's out sick for a week or two, or he's on vacation for a week, it doesn't happen. Right. If if something changes and he doesn't catch it, it doesn't happen. Right. It's not, certainly not dynamic, right? It's a, it, at best, it's a week behind where the reality is. If you're lucky. Right. If you're lucky. Very and lucky. I've talked to different data centers to where they're a month behind. They, right. they just don't know. Yeah. And so where, where we have products, and, and specifically in the storage space, is I can bring in a, a tool, a, a software tool, that'll say, hey, here's... Here's what's going on in this array, this is what's going on in this array, and this is what's going on in this array, all in one view, in okay. one console for you. Um, a lot of people like to say single pane of glass. Right. Yes, it's one console, one language okay. of understanding, because not only are these different vendors, but they speak different languages. It's, it's, it's the slightly different. So then I can see what, um, what my total capacity is being used for the environment, for example? Exactly. And then with that tool, not only can I see it, in a single console, but I can also get a report on it. I can alert on it. I can understand, hey, this volume here is at max capacity. Right. This volume is at a little bit of capacity. I need more capacity. Where can I go? I can right. go here, right. or I can go here if need be, all from one view, and one language. You know, we like to use the term one truth. Okay. I'm gotcha. getting one truth here. So another challenge I see sometimes in the environment is they're looking for not only more capacity but increasingly more performance. So can you yes. identify, for example, hey, here's some available SSDs that nobody's using, things like that? Absolutely. So along with the tool that we're talking of capacity, we're gonna report on performance information okay. concerning IOPS, throughput, and especially latency. When I get into a specific lens, 
I really want to know what my latency is, okay. and I want to help avoid the noisy neighbor syndrome right. that I can get in Lunds, especially in a virtualized environment. I've got virtual machines all over, right. a Lunds assigned to them. How, you know, one is going to be starts taking up all my performance. Right. And so then I got a report that's running over here. So I need to understand where are my noisy neighbors. And in our tool, you can literally look at a specific LUN and see all the LUNs that are assigned to that same pool of storage okay. and see where your noisy neighbors are. Who's so then you can the sort of make some decisions and say, okay, I can't have these two guys on the same LUN at the same time as an example. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for probably 20 hours out of the day, that looks great, but for the four hours where some massive report or some massive data inquir query is going on, mm -hmm it doesn't work for you. So now, do you guys have the ability to, uh, do, do I have to stare at the screen all the time or can no. I kind of go back in time and look at it? <laughs> Absolutely, so okay. you can see trend analysis based off of it and there's internal reporting and custom reporting that you can do so where you don't have to stare at it all the time. Um, most of our customers, they look at it maybe once a day. Okay. Um, and a lot of that is has to do, say, what are my top items I need to worry about coming into the office? Right. Where are my key performance objects that I have? Where are my key capabilities? capacity objects that I, that I have and, and how does that trending out. So it sounds like I can set like thresholds and alerts for example? Absolutely. Okay. So you can set individual thresholds at an array level, at a storage pool, even down to a LUN or a volume level that lets you understand, hey, this, this LUN this LUN right here is more important than these two LUNs, okay. or this LUN, or this LUN, and this okay. is an important one. You can set individual thresholds for those specific ones versus these. Gotcha. So as we wrap up, how, how what does it take to install this? Do I need like to install a web server, or how does it work? So it's actually bundled up in a single package okay. for ease of use, and you can go and download a 30-day trial today, Okay. and it'll install the web aspect. It'll even install a SQL database for you if you okay. want to use that or if you have your own database that you want to use you can set that up also oh, okay so it's very easy to install probably within an hour once you get it going and in the setup and we use primarily SMIS discovery for the storage devices okay. um, and that's a very intuitive tool and process to but once it's set up it starts polling mm -hmm. You'll be able to see all this data. Okay, and then adding a LUN for it to—I mean, not a LUN, but a, an array for it to monitor—that's pretty straightforward as pretty well. Pretty straightforward. It's the same process as when you add your initial devices okay. on there. Okay, great. So I can be up and running in like a day or so. Uh, le much less than that. Uh, much less than that. Much okay. less than that. Depending on how many arrays you have. If you if you have a hundred arrays, it might take you a day just right. to manually add them all in there. Cool. All right, James, thanks very much for joining us Thank today. you, George. Very happy to be here. So there you have it. We can really get rid of Excel spreadsheets now. And, and really, it's not just getting rid of the Excel spreadsheet, but the time that's required to manage and monitor them. We live in a very dynamic data center today. And waiting a week for the latest information, that's just going to take too long. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst for Storage Switzerland.